I'm very, very happy to see that you are so numerous to listen to the great Sumia Deb because I love that guy. So I'm really happy for him. And I'm sure you will be all very happy for what he's going to tell you. So Sumia uh, is well known as Developer, it's his nickname. Um, he is a contributor and a Mozilla Reps mentor. He is one of the leaders of the Indian community. In fact, he is one of the founders of the Indian community and he is like the, maybe one of the greatest contributors I know. Um, he is a front-end developer and his interests lie in open source projects such as Mozilla, Wikimedia, Fedora, KDE, Kernel, Videoland, Lip Purple, Diaspora, and so and so forth, in a descending order of priority. So you should have noticed that Mozilla is on the top. Um, Deb has been a web aficionado and tech evangelist for some time now, so I'm sure you will enjoy his talk. Please welcome Deb. Thanks, Clarista, for embarrassing me. And uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, JavaScript for the Skeptics, a contemporary retrospective on advanced and applied JavaScript. If you're squinting your eyes or frowning, you're the right kind of audience. And uh, those of you who are not, maybe I'm like a bit dozy after the lunch. That's OK. So yeah, so I'll hop into the topic. So it's a OK, so if you have questions or feedbacks, you can just go and uh, ping developer on Twitter. Uh, I'll just check them afterwards so that uh, everyone can see the question here. And also, first them uh, Mozilla on my Mozilla IRC, you can ask the questions. So the JavaScript, how did it start? When I say retrospective, I thought that I'll use a couple of minutes, just a couple of minutes, to talk about the early stage. So it was like 10 crazy days when Brendan Eek, city of Mozilla, worked really hard in Netscape and came up with this new thing called JavaScript. It wasn't known as JavaScript, of course, as many of you know. I'm, not, I'm sparing those details. So what happened recently afterwards when JavaScript was a thing that you can do stuff with it on the web, people saw the prospect of make, turn it, turning it into a standard. Hence came the ECMAScript early 2000. Then we went ahead with all the things we can do now. We know now. That's the purpose I'm terming it as early. DOM manipulation, ECMAScript for uh, X XML, uh, ActionScript, I mean, like, uh, used most of the time working on that, JSON, SX. Many of the stuff came out, and you know that, for a fact, it works. That's how the web works. It's the early stage, how the web started to shape up. But from the very beginning, people had this concept like JavaScript, it's like a second grade language. It's not something you would want to know if you're into hardcore stuff. You probably would want to know if you're a kid and you cannot afford to know something else. So people would probably give you uh, expression like JavaScript. <laughs> and that's OK. I and mean, that's normal. That used to happen. And I'm not saying that they were wrong, because JavaScript was very nascent at that point of time. It was, it was just a kid, hyperactive kid. But it grew up. So now, what you can do with JavaScript? I'm like, as you can see, many people are interested about JavaScript, of course. Dev room is full. So now you know that it's, it's something that can do useful stuff for you, and you can do useful stuff with it, something tangible, something real, something that works, and reach out to many people. One such example is Node.js, running JavaScript on the server side, and do lots of things with it. I mean, like, you cannot really draw a line and say that this is how much you can do, this is you, well, how much you cannot. PDFJS. How many of you actually know what PDFJS is? Oh my god, I'll be damned. <laughs> Why am I here? So yeah, I thought that I will just give a demo anyway of PDFJS. So now, it started as Andreas Gall's 
proof of concept implementation of rendering PDF on the web on the on the uh, uh, with JavaScript in the browser itself. So basically, rendering PDF with JavaScript. And now it's something so real that it's integrated into Firefox. Same thing actually is being used by Chrome as well. So you can now open fire, uh, PDFs in Firefox and Chrome. The same project that started out is PDFJS. This, this is great, right? Come again? When it works, yeah, of course, of course. I, of, you can sure share hand, I, I believe. You can share hand if something doesn't work, file a bug, comment on the issues and reply, or, or submit a patch. It'll get better, I assure you. <laughs> yeah, ASMJS, some way. ASMJS is basically a subset of JavaScript to do something that actually can be done in C, C++ better. So you ca can technically do something in C, C++, but you don't actually know how do you do that in JavaScript. What you do, you do that in ASMJS, and then use ASMJS to run that in browser, like compile it into JS, and then run it some way. I'll just give you a brief demo. Shamoe is how you render after PDFJS. It was it was obvious that if you were really wanted to do something with JavaScript, you could. So how about you want to render Flash with JavaScript, right? So maybe I'll a brief demo. I wouldn't really want to waste time on this, but. Yeah. So I'll just let it a second for loading. Yeah. So this is technically a flash game, but now implemented. I'm I'm too bad at this. I will not try. <laughs> Plus, it, it's a performance. Pressure, like so many people looking at me when I'm playing games. I'm not used to that. <laughs> when I play a game, nobody's around. So, this is actually a flash game. And now, right now, it's being rendered and run on JavaScript. No flash VM. So, it's totally done with JavaScript. As the question was with PDFJS, when it works, still it is kind of raw, around, uh, rough around the edges, needs polish, but it works. Like, if you really wanted to extend the features, make it do more stuff, you could. And probably you should, because it's more performance efficient. It can be integrated into the browser. No plugins required. I'm really, personally, I'm really looking forward for that day when I wouldn't need to install a plugin to run Flash contents. Maybe you can argue that Flash is not required. That's a different argument altogether. But since I'm like, until the day comes, I would prefer to run it with JavaScript than use a different VM and plugins for that. So that's Shamoe. Zip file JS. It's still, again, from Andreas Gull, and he came up with the idea how we can read a zip file with JavaScript. So you actually pass an array buffer into the constructor, and then it reads the entire zip file compressed file, and it gets you the content of that zip file. Cool is that, right? It's practical usage. And then there comes the web API. How many of you know about web API? Quick show of hand. Mm, OK, 50-50. OK, that's good. Because still, I have something to say about that then. So web APIs are what makes Firefox OS real. The reason I say that is, when you make a call with Firefox OS device, you're making a call request on an HTML application, technically. The Gaia, whatever interface you see, it's an HTML application. And you're, making, you're asking it to make call. You're asking it to send SMS text. You're asking it to do a hell lot of things, as you can see. This is a complete list of it. 
you're asking all those things and it's actually making the HTML do stuff that nobody even a couple of years back thought was possible to be done with HTML. And that's because JavaScript was extended, HTML was extended, well, basically JavaScript of course, uh, extended to do such things. So when you say browser API, alarm API, um, the vibrator API, contacts API, whatever it is, you're making that call with your HTML application, JavaScript is passing on that information, that system call on the gong, that is the operating system layer of Firefox OS. And then it is being processed by the kernel and it responds back and same thing. So basically you're com communicating with the OS core with JavaScript. How cool is that? Nobody actually thought that would be possible, say, five years back. When I say nobody, I didn't mean it because technically it's not possible, probabilistically. But anyway, you get the idea. So, yes, now JavaScript is capable of all these things. This is the present of JavaScript. These are the things we can do. And it also proves that these are the things JavaScript can do, which was previously thought that it's not possible to do with JavaScript. So actually, what if there are more to explore? If you think that, I'm like, if you're at this stage that, is it really done with JavaScript? I don't believe you, I don't trust you, who are you? The thing is, yes, you can of course go back and look, like, look up for the, all those things and play cool demos. There are lots of them on the interwebs, so yeah, please, I would request you to do that. So the next, what's coming up? What's, what's the future? We have covered the past, we have covered the present. What's for the future? How many of you know about low-level JS? No, not many, yeah, but yeah, it's that kind of thing. Anyway, so I'll show you something cool. Um, my machine is capable of doing better, yeah. So, do you see that? Okay, I'll just, this is the right click. That was, that was the left click, this is the right click. You can actually tear this thing up. And then, the cool part, it actually has weight and all the other simulations into it. So, it can actually, if you really cut it down very nastily, it can tear itself up on its own weight and all these things. This has been done with LLJS. So what LLJS is, it's kind of a merger between JavaScript and C. It has, uh, you, can, you, you have very good manual, uh, me memory manipulation capability and it's typed, but it's still JavaScript. It's kind of JavaScript, but it's still, you can do lots of memory optimization, garbage collection, it's really simple. But yes, this is technically more of a JavaScript than anything else, and it runs on web. So of course, it has to be JavaScript. Not C doesn't run on web. You know that. So yes, this is something LLJS can do. What else? Mscripten. What Mscripten is? So Mscripten is the thing that makes ASMJS and uh, many of the cool things that you see, possible. Because it actually converts the LLVM codes, the byte codes, into JavaScript. So you can write codes in C, C++, Ruby, Rust. Actually, I am not going to give you the entire list because I cannot remember all of them. It's about 20 languages. But you can code in those languages you can generate the bytecode, and that bytecode can be passed into mscripten, and mscripten will generate the, com I mean like the JavaScript for that. So when you have that, it's not, I'm not saying it's very readable or maintainable code that you can hop in and then manipulate it manually, but that's what it does. It gives you a JavaScript code, which you can run then on the web, on the browser. And uh, what you can do with it is epic. So epic, uh, the, creator of the Unreal Engine 3. Um, Mozilla has actually, in four days, they have ported their 
AP, uh, the Unreal 3 engine into JavaScript in a way. I am not sure it's still downloading, so the live demo wouldn't go well. I knew that. I mean, like, it happens, right? So I actually have a video so that you can know. Uh, so, yeah. So, so this is how it goes. This is all with JavaScript. So when it's running, enter 3D assets loading to shadows and the reflection, the everything. It's done with JavaScript. It's WebGL. It's using WebGL, and it's it's really like epic. So you can actually have the experience what you have with a native language. Say, for example, this game, this engine was made with C++, but, and you can run it on your desktop. But what if you wanted to play a mass, I mean, like MMORPG on your, with your browser, like, so that you don't have to dip, uh, worry about the platform, which, where, whether you're on Mac or Windows or Linux, because browsers are on every platform, right? Once you make something run on one browser, Rule of thumb, it will work on the other platforms as well. So once you make this game, everything uh, with all the goodies, like as it would look in uh, with the C, C++ normal Unreal 3 engine, it, if it looks the same way, if it gives you the same playability on the browser, how cool is that? So this is one thing. I'll just cut, cut it short. And uh, yeah, so. Broadway JS is rendering H.264 videos. And same thing, the PDF JS, some way, like something for uh, uh, rendering PDF, something for rendering um, the Flash content. This is for the video codecs. So, what if you wanted to render H.264 video codecs on the web with JavaScript, and with uh, like uh, leveraging from the GPU uh, uh, processing as well, parallel processing as well? So, this is it. Uh, I'm very sure that it wouldn't load up as well. The videos are pretty huge, so I'm not going to put pressure on the network. Um, <clears throat> then, parallel JavaScript. Running JavaScript on parallel threads, which is something that's huge. If you know about JavaScript and know about the limitation so far, was known that JavaScript runs on one thread and keeps it busy, and there are a lot of things around this. Like you can go on and on and on. So when you have the parallel JavaScript, it totally like is nothing you can say about JavaScript performance because you can actually have a system where you can run JavaScript in multiple threads and actually be sure that the performance is not something that hampers your software. Yeah, that's my idea. Uh, how about having a crowd JS or swarming algorithms like ant swarming, bee swarming algorithms, so that if, whether, if you if you think about it, there is no real good open source project where you can see the battle scenes and all these things, as you see in the movies. You don't see those in the games because there is no very good open source project around it. There are a couple uh, experimental projects, but if we can do that with JavaScript, it will be really great, wouldn't you see? Because it will run on the web as well, and you can actually use it for the movies as or open source movies and all these things. So thank you, skeptics, because you made that happen. If people weren't squinting eyes, weren't frowning at JavaScript, weren't saying that, damn, JavaScript cannot do that, <laughs> this wasn't possible. This wouldn't have been possible. It's really possible today because many people, the naysayers going to naysay, so that's, that was the case. So they went ahead with saying, this isn't possible, that isn't possible, you cannot do that, this is not practical, and all sorts of things. But when it's a practical, you have a Firefox OS phone, you have a phone OS that actually is built on JavaScript. So, yes, that's the purpose of the talk. JavaScript for skeptics is not to bash the skeptics, skeptics it's to thank them. Thank you. And if you have any question or answer, please.
please use the microphone if you have any question. Thank you. Um, uh, I have one question regarding uh, one very important thing, which is speed. I don't want to be trolled, just wondering how fast is the execution of, let's say, this 3D environment from a real technology that you show? Because, we, uh, by the way, by the way, wait, just talk, your talk was really great. Sorry for saying at the end. Cool, thank you. So I'm not skeptic, I'm just wondering. <laughs> That's okay. So now, thank you if you're skeptic. So uh, the question, I don't actually have numbers around it, but if you go and play, actually on my system it gives 60 plus FPS. When I try and try and play the Epic Citadel, it gives more than 60 FPS. So actually it's pretty good and it's more than I mean like uh, HD display. So it's pretty pretty cool. I would say I, I I don't have the specific numbers around it though. For now, so anyone else? Hi, thank you for the for the talk. Um, you had a link to a demo, I think, uh, for ASMGS in your in your slides. Uh, would it be possible to see it? Uh, that's actually, um, thanks for noticing. I, I, I figured that when editing, it's not actually on the ASMGS's link. I probably have put the missed link. So you can just Google it up and go to okay. the page, and that wiki page will give you the uh, link to the demos. OK, thank so you very much. Sorry about that. Yeah, I have a question here, I guess. Hey, thanks. Uh, super cool talk, by the way. Thank you. Um, so when you compile, like for when LLVM goes to JavaScript, um, it translates to it translates to literal JavaScript. It's readable, right? Or no? Yeah, it is. So it's a subset of JavaScript, you can say. Not everything it can do. Yeah, exactly. JavaScript can do. So it, you sort of start to think like if Jav as JavaScript the language, just being a language of course for the JavaScript, the virtual machine, it, you, you know, like the, um, how do you say, the, the difference between language implementation and virtual machine it gets very hazy. So w why would you still compile to an intermediate thing like JavaScript if you could directly make JavaScript bytecode, for example? So, say, I will not be the very right person to answer these things because there might be something I'd say will not be the correct information. But if I had to be politically correct on this, some things if you want to do, and it's not very good to do in JavaScript, but you can do it easily with C, C++, you do it that way, and then use ASMJS so that it can use the same features in JavaScript that's manually not possible but it's possible when you use ASMJS. It's actually a subset of JavaScript. It's not everything that JavaScript can do, but it can do something specific in a very efficient way than you can do it manually. If that answers your question, yeah. yeah. What Job. is the relationship between LLJS and ASMJS? How do they kind of fit together? Because the way you describe them, they seem to be quite similar. Yeah, exactly. So. I would say my understanding is not very profound on this. What I understand about LLJS is you can manage memory and mani uh, sorry uh, garbage collection memory management is very uh, easy with LLJS and you can actually manually uh, interfere with the generated code. But with ASMJS is that's not possible. If I uh, understand uh, my understanding is correct, but that not, might not be on this particular thing. It's possible that I don't understand that very correctly because I haven't hand coded uh, LLJS rendered code yet. So that's that. Thank you so much. Uh, if you agree, I think we can applause again Deb for his talk.